Sure. Uh, my name is Wesley Reith. I'm operations manager here at Grainer Farm in Southwest Michigan. Uh, we're a diversified uh, organic farm here in the southwesternmost county of Michigan. So we're in Berrien County. Um, it is uh, just north of the Indiana line and just east of Lake Michigan. So we kind of farm in this uh, little microclimate that the lake gives us here. And uh, we farm five or six acres of intensive vegetable production alongside just shy of uh, about 500 acres of organic row crops. So corn, soybeans, uh, wheat, rye, and barley. Uh, today we're going to look specifically at some of our cereal grains, namely wheat and rye and how we utilize those and how we uh, specifically use them in our post-harvest handling uh, system. Um, most of our wheat and rye that we grow here ends up getting used in Michigan in one of a couple ways. Um, we typically aim for achieving uh, food grade quality with these particular grains because our end users are using them in distilling or milling uh, malting applications and so they require certain quality specs for us to hit. So our post-harvest handling is very important uh, to consistently achieve those here in, in our climate. Um, we do an initial post-harvest cleaning here at the farm and then our final cleaning, uh, depending on the buyer, uh, will happen at C3 Seeds in Niles, Michigan, which is about uh, 30 minutes from us. We work with a seed cleaner there who has some different, uh, more specific equipment like a fanning mill and a gravity table and spiral separators. So we don't have that equipment here on the farm, but uh, we'll show you kind of uh, what we do here on the farm to basically initially dry that grain and store it until we can clean it. All right. So I'm standing here in front of our, uh, our grain dryer here on the farm. I'm going to describe a little bit about how we basically take grain from the field and get it into the system. Uh, and then I'll talk about more specifically how the dryer itself works. So uh, when we bring grain in from the field, it's arriving on a grain truck or a semi or some, a wagon, some type of vehicle. Regardless of the type of vehicle, all of that grain typically winds up uh, going into this auger here, which you can see is filling this, what we call a wet bin. Uh, the wet bin term just means grain that comes from the field that might be, that might have some extra moisture on it. So it's not grain that's ready to be stored yet. Uh, it's grain that has yet to be dried. Um, attached to this uh, bin here, we just have a, uh, what they call a truck auger, or in our case, it's a swing away auger. There's different kinds. Um, there's really nothing specific about ours generally. Um, we just have one that fits our trucks pretty well. So um, basically when grain comes in from the field, it goes into this auger and it fills this bin. Um, our particular wet bin here is a little bit unique because this bin actually sits on scales. So this bin is actually floating and when we dump grain into it, we can weigh each truckload. So that's an important part for us to kind of help manage inventory. We don't have a truck scale on the farm. So this was our way to kind of go around that problem and find a different way to, to inventory our grain as it comes in from the field. Um, so from this bin, um, there's an auger here connected to the bottom of that hopper. And that uh, auger raises itself or takes the grain to the top of the dryer. So that's kind of the general flow of grain coming into the bin goes to the bottom and then from the bottom of that bin it goes up to the top of the dryer and then the grain gets fed into the dryer uh, automatically. So this auger that runs from the bottom of the wet bin to the top of the dryer is controlled by the dryer. It's not manually controlled by us. Um, we, we program that to, to kind of feed the dryer as it needs grain. Um, and so to my right here then is our uh, grain dryer. Um, wet grain will come into that. Uh, it starts at the top finishes at the bottom and when it exits, ideally it's at a proper storage moisture for what we need uh, that grain to be at, typically around 13%. Um, this type of dryer specifically is conventionally referred to as a continuous flow type dryer. There's lots of different types. Um, this particular type just seemed to, to fit the, our needs the best in terms of uh, versatility. Um, so this dryer will operate in continuous flow meaning that it's continuously moving grain through the channels and out the bottom, or you can operate it in what we call um, a batch system or a batch operation, meaning the dryer will fill entirely once 
it will dry that whole batch and then unload the batch all at once and then it gets filled again. So there's really two modes to operate it in and some dryers have that functionality. Uh, we chose that because we have a, a wide variety of crops that we sometimes need to dry and need both of those applications. Um, so the, the dryer basically, there, there's two variables to consider when you're, when you're looking at a dryer for your farm. Um, basically, you, you want to, to size your dryer based on your harvest capacity. So you want your dryer to be able to handle how much grain you can harvest so you don't get backlogged with grain that's waiting to be dried and can't move it quickly enough. Um, we chose our size just based on our, our combine and, and what our trucks can haul at any given time. Um, but that's an important consideration in kind of selecting a dryer uh, for your own needs. All right. So I'm standing here in front of our grain dryer here at the farm. Um, this particular model is a, a, a Brock Super B dryer. There's a lot of different types of models uh, like this. This is a continuous flow type dryer. Um, so generally the grain works itself from the top to the bottom. By the time it hits the bottom and exits the dryer, it's ready to be stored. So um, it has basically two air channels that run the perimeter of the dryer. Um, these channels here, these are actually perforated, um, which might be hard to see with the camera, but uh, the grain basically feels these perforations. And what, what is happening is there's a fan on the dryer that's blowing air through it and it has to come, the only way for that air to get out of the dryer is through the grain and out these perforations. So you're basically taking warm air or hot air, moving it through a uh, grain that is wet or has some moisture to it. And by the time the grain goes from the top and travels all the way here to the bottom and exits the dryer, uh, you've removed some amount of moisture from that grain. Um, with this dryer, as with uh, other grain dryers, basically you have two variables that you're working with, and that is the amount of heat that you're adding to the grain and the amount of time that it's in the dryer. So those are kind of your adjustment points. Um, with ours, we can have, we have quite a bit of functionality in terms of adjusting those parameters. Um, this dryer can run in an automatic mode where it decides how fast and at what temperature it needs to be drying to get the grain to uh, whatever percent we tell it needs to go to. Or we can run it manually where we choose those parameters like time and heat ourselves. Um, so to give you an example, um, we might decide that we want to dry some uh, wheat or rye at a relatively low temperature to maintain grain quality. Uh, we don't want to ruin the germ or the, the germination energy of that grain by drying it too hot. Uh, that can oftentimes damage the grain or crack it even. Um, so we'll typically dry wheat or rye at around 95 or 100 degrees if we need to use heat at all. Um, we prefer just to use ambient air to, to, to do any kind of drying if it needs it. Um, so if we're running the dryer at 95 or 100 degrees, we might put wheat in at the top, send it to the bottom, and let's say it might take an hour for that grain to reach the bottom. If it's not quite dry enough, uh, we might say, all right, we need to slow the dryer down a little bit to give that grain a little more time in the dryer to, to fully dry down before it exits. So we constantly monitor that, and especially when we're getting the grain set or getting the dryer set. Once we're in a larger field and we're getting grain in at the same moisture, normally this can run on its own without somebody watching it all the time. Um, but it does take some getting used to to kind of to set it up. Um, so that's the general flow of how, uh, you know, what we're kind of adjusting to get the dryer to do what we want it to do. All right, so I'm standing here uh, next to the, the, the center of our dryer here. Um, a common misconception with this style of dryer is that the, hot, the entire uh, interior of the dryer is full of grain at any time. That's actually not true. This whole middle cavity where I'm standing next to this door is all open even when there's grain flowing through the dryer. The only portion of the dryer that holds grain are two perimeter channels that run along the perimeter and the outside of the dryer here. This middle cavity is necessary because it kind of acts like an oven to cook the grain a little bit. Uh, there's a large burner and a large fan on the opposite end of the dryer. Uh, those two things in combination create a, a, a hot air mass that is then pushed into the dryer and the only way for that air to escape the dryer is to go through the grain and through the per perforations to either side. Uh, so that is basically how this dryer accomplishes the act of taking moisture out of grain by pushing hot air through it. Um, standing next to a field of our Danko rye here, so this is one of the cereal rye varieties we grow on the farm. 
Uh, it's a Polish variety. We like it a lot for milling and distilling characteristics. Um, and this grain is just about ready to harvest. Uh, we've been kind of waiting for Mother Nature to give us a break to come out here, but typically when a grain is you know, tilted down like this, when the heads hang low, that means it's reached physiological maturity, and then you're just looking for the grain itself to be at a proper harvest moisture. So as fancy as all of our gadgets are with dryers and moisture testers, um, Sometimes when we come out to the field, all we do is a, what we call the bite test, where we take a kernel of grain and put it in our mouth and chew it. If it cracks, I mean, if you feel it crack when you bite it between your teeth, that means the grain's probably ready to go. And if it feels chewy, it's probably not ready yet. So as high tech as everything is, sometimes the simplest tests give us the, the best idea on when a grain is ready to harvest.